In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to fix drop stitches and holes in your knitted fabric that you don't discover until the project is complete. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Every so often, you'll finish a project and discover that there's a hole in your fabric or that there's a live stitch that isn't connected to the rest of the fabric. In some cases, you discover the problem while your stitches are still on the needles, but the mistake is so far back, laddering down isn't a good option, and you don't want to rip it all out in order to fix it. Well, today I'll show you how to identify which of three different scenarios you might have going on in your fabric and how to fix those mistakes. So let's get started. So there's three situations we're looking at and two of them have a live stitch that has escaped. So if there's a live stitch situation, we need to recapture that live stitch immediately um, before we can go any further. So we'll start here. Here we can see we have a live stitch that just is sitting here on the fabric and then there's quite a large hole above it. So the first thing I wanna do is just to take a locking stitch marker and capture that live stitch right away and so it doesn't go any further. And I wanna make sure that there aren't any uh, loose strands like that hasn't actually laddered down at all and then I can evaluate what's going on here. What I can see here is that I have three columns of stitches. I've got one column here, I've got the one where the live stitch is attached and then I've got one on the left and then we have this hole. So let's take a look at the hole. So this column that was coming to the left of that live stitch comes up here and the column that's to the right of that live stitch comes up here. And then in the center, we have another column of stitches. So what has happened here is that somehow the stitch was dropped, but it was replaced by another stitch. So in this case, I have a drop stitch, but you can see that it has laddered down a little bit. So before I put this on a locking stitch marker, I want to ladder back up to where the hole is. So I've come back up here. Now I can put this on a locking stitch marker. So in this case, we have a column of stitches below the live stitch, but no column of stitches above it. So the third scenario, there's no live stitch below this hole, but you do have a new column of stitches above the hole. And what happened here was that there was an accidental yarn over. So let's fix this first hole where we have um, a column of stitches ending in a live stitch, a hole, and then a column of stitches above the hole. So what we need to do is link this live stitch to the base of the column above the hole. So I have thread, I'm, I'm doing this in contrasting yarn so you can see this is a thinner yarn than what I used here and it's much darker because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna come up beh from behind through the hole and then I'm going to come up through the center of this stitch. I wanna make sure that the stitch is not uh, twisted when I come up. I'm gonna come up through the center and pull the yarn through. I wanna leave a nice uh, tail so that I can weave it in later. I can now take this locking marker off. So now what I wanna do, that we've got a yarn over here. I wanna come through the right leg of that stitch right above the hole and the left leg of that stitch. So I'm coming through both of those legs. And now I want to go down through the center of that stitch and pull it through the back. So what we have done is we have linked those stitches together. And now we can weave in the ends on the back. I like to use the dupli reverse duplicate stitch. Now I'll put a link to a video uh, at the top of the screen 
screen. So I would use this yarn tail and follow the path of stitches along in this direction and use the other yarn tail to follow along the path of that one. But you could use any method of weaving in ends that you prefer um, once you have um, this stitch anchored again. So in, this is the scenario where we have a live stitch but no column, corresponding column of stitches above it. So we need to turn this into a decrease. This live stitch here needs to get anchored at the back of the work to either this stitch or this stitch. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. If this originally was supposed to have been a decrease and you know which that it was supposed to be a knit two together or an SSK, then you can uh, attach it accordingly. Um, for myself, I just find it easier to attach to this, the stitch on the left. So the first thing I want to do is to push this back through to the back of the work. So I'm just going to shove that through the hole. Then I want to take a locking stitch marker and mark the stitch I'm going to anchor it to. So again, we have columns, three columns of stitches here, but we've only got two here. So I'm going to mark the stitch on the left as the one I'm going to anchor the live loop to. So I'm just going to mark around it like this, and then I can turn around on the back, and I can see which stitch I have to follow the path of on the back. So we have this live stitch and we want to anchor it to the back of the stitch that this orange marker is around. So what I'm going to do is go down through the center of this live loop stitch. Catch it like that. Leaving myself a tail to weave in. Can take this marker off now because I have my yarn through it. So now I look at this orange marker and I have these three pearl bumps. I want to come under. We've got two pearl bumps here and one pearl bump up here. So I'm going to come to this one right here, come up, follow the path of that upper one, and come down through this other one. And then I'm going to come back through the live loop from the back, like this. So I've attached it to that, to that stitch, I've attached it to the back. And let me take this marker off. And so that stitch, that stitch has disappeared. You can, if I pull apart, you can see the little dark green in there, but it's disappeared. And so now that we've attached this, we can weave the ends in of these two tails. Again, I would use reverse duplicate stitch and follow the path in each direction using each of the tails, but you don't have to. You can weave these ends in however you would normally weave in yarn tails. So in this type of scenario, I use the same technique that I use when I'm closing other gaps in my work where maybe I have uh, two pieces have split apart or maybe I have an underarm uh, hole or a uh, hole in a mitten where the thumb separates from the palm. So you can use the same techniques that you would use to uh, cinch up those holes. And what you do is you follow the path. There's pearl bumps that surround this hole all the way around. So what I do is I just follow the path of those pearl bumps by running my the yarn around there. And you can do it a couple of times so that when you cinch it, it's not going to spread back open again. So I'm coming around a second time. and I've pulled it closed, and then now I can weave those ends in. So let's take a look at the front of the work. So you can see that here, here's where the new column of stitches appeared. So, 
So it is slightly visible. It's going to be because you have a new column of stitches in between there, but it has closed the hole. My demonstrations were all in stockinette stitch, but these types of fixes are possible in any type of stitch pattern. When joining a live stitch to a column of stitches above it, you may need to change the path of the needle and working yarn in order to replicate the correct type of stitch. As I often mention, practicing on a swatch will help you learn and understand the process before you attempt it on an actual project. If you found this video useful and would like to show your appreciation, you can buy me a coffee on Ko-fi. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.